So here at Flight Test, we love B-17s. We built a 20-foot version of it. We've shot fireworks at B-17s. We have an FT Tubby B-17, and now we're coming out with an MTO made-to-order Tubby B-17. But today, we're gonna be printing off a B-17 that you guys can print at home. So Mike and Dave have been doing a lot of work preparing for this project. Let's go check out the Fab Lab and see what they're doing. All right, everybody. Sorry for the mess in here. Right now, we're trying to update the Fab Lab a little bit. And uh, one of the ways we're doing so is with our bamboo printers. So as you guys know, we use bamboo printers quite a bit here. And the reason behind it is since the first day that we got our first one, I fell in love with it. These things are awesome. Now, one of the ones that I like the best is the X1 Carbon, as you can see behind me. Now, one of the reasons I like bamboos so much is they're completely enclosed. They have the AMS system with four different kinds of filament that you can put in it and do multicolors, fairly simple. And on top of that, they also have a camera system so you can do time lapses and micro LIDAR. So that way, if you get in any sort of trouble, it has an AI detection thing. So uh, if anything delaminates from the bed or anything along those lines, it has a spaghetti detection and it'll pause the print and it'll inform you on the app on your phone that there's a problem so you can come check it out and see what's going on. Not only do we use these printers up here in HQ, we also use them down in manufacturing for printing all the parts that we have in all of our kits. So one of the cool things about Eclipson is they partnered up with Bamboo Lab, so that way they have profiles and everything that you can already download and send directly to the printer without having to do anything. So we're gonna go back here to my desk and we're gonna check that out. So as you can see here, it's all set up for me already. All I did was open up the app and it shows me that all these pieces are PLA in this case and I have different print plates for all the parts. So right here we have all PLA and then this last one on the corner, we have TPU. So I have everything set up for PLA at this point, so we're gonna print all of these plates on all of our printers, and we're gonna get this thing printed up in no time at all. So one of the things that you actually have to do before you start printing in lightweight PLA with the bamboos is go through and actually set up your profile for that. To do so, basically all you have to do is do some calibration tests. Since the lightweight PLA expands, you just have to calibrate the flow a little bit. Now if you guys want to learn how to do that, Eclipson has a really good tutorial out on how to do so to make sure you check it out. Now if you guys have any questions about bamboo, don't hesitate to ask. Make sure you leave it in the comments below and hopefully we can help you out and give you some answers in a future video. So I don't know about you guys, but around here, speed is money. And with how fast these bamboo printers print, it saves us a lot of time, which in turn saves us a lot of money. Not to mention the fact that we can go through, set them, forget about it, and not worry about them messing up because if they do, they're gonna let me know on my phone. Now, as far as it goes, most of these projects we do, we couldn't do without bamboo and all the support they've given us and these awesome printers behind me. Make sure you stay tuned because here before too long, we're gonna be showing in a future video how exactly we're updating our Fab Lab. So like guys are out in the Flutog, I was tasked with building this 3D printed B17 that I'm working on. And I went ahead and I started getting all the carbon tubes cut and everything like that and I ran into an issue. I needed more 10 mil tube and we didn't have any. All we had left was some 8 mil lying around. So what my dad did for me, he went ahead and printed me some little tubes to slide over top of that 8 mil and make it 10 mil so it slides in the wing real nice and stays strong. So now that we got this, I'm going to go ahead and start gluing that wing together and get it going. Okay, I'm a little farther into the build now. The wing is looking real nice. I got all the covering and stuff on. Um, I got to figure out magnet solution because these are actually held on by magnets um, once the motor's going. So something really cool about the wing core of this thing, it's uh, the center of it is four pieces and they kind of puzzle piece together real nice and slide together. So I thought that was real neat, but the, uh, the carbon tube that we had the 3D printed sleeves on worked phenomenal on the wing hat. And everything else has been going pretty smoothly. Um, a lot bigger than I thought. I mean, not quite as big as our original B-17, but it's going real good. Crazy amount of details. Like, I mean, you got little gunners. I don't know why you can see that, but tons of little gunners, tons of small pieces. Still a lot to put on it. Um, it's going real nice. Crazy cool plane. Really easy to build. An absolute blast I'm having here. Um, just kind of been hanging out with myself and cruising away building this thing while the guys are gone, hoping to surprise them with what I got done when I get back. But it's looking pretty cool. 
I was, I was sitting here, I finished doing off the uh, elevator and rudder assembly. Got it all moving nicely. It's real smart. The hinge on the elevator is actually this far as well. So it rotates on a carbon tube. Real cool design right there. Um, rudder works well and then also we'll have a steerable tailwheel. I haven't meant that it up yet. But I'm looking over here and I'm like, those are my aileron pieces. Why is there so much more? Like, what's going on over here? And then I checked the build video back. I thought I missed something. And these are actually the flaps, which are real cool. They sit in with the wing. So like the, I think they're called Fowler flaps. They sit in with the wing, so the top air flows to there, but the bottom comes down and makes flaps. And I saw these little tabs over here as well earlier. I'm like, that's weird. Why are they flexible? Like, that doesn't make sense. These are supposed to be real strong for when like, you can join the control surfaces together, like uh, the elevator and stuff like that. And I was like, why are they flexible? That doesn't make sense. That will be the hinges for the Fowler flaps. So that is super, super cool. One of my favorite things is anytime with 3D printed airplanes, it's kind of rewarding because all the printing happens and then the assembly happens. And we were away at the Red Bull Flutog and Michael was building this while we were gone. And to come back to see it go from tons and tons of pieces to basically snap together is incredible. It's kind of ironic anytime, you know, you know our love for B-17s, we have the 20 footer and the 20 footer is obviously a scale representation, but I've been around the tubby B-17 so much to come across this, I'm like, it's so skinny, you know? But it looks, the, the details, every window, every panel line is right in there. It's it's incredible. So what's your next steps? I'm, I'm gonna take it into paint now because uh, there's so many small pieces that you add on afterwards that aren't the same color as what's around it. And they did a really cool thing. So like for like this top little gunner, they actually have little um, 3D prints that you put on top of this. So you paint this all one color and then you paint those all one color and you glue them on and then that's like all complete. So you don't have to worry about masking this tiny piece off or anything like that. Wow. So not only did they think about the build process, thought about the paint process too. If you guys want to see the build process, check out their video as well too. It's kind of like the cool glowing hands, yeah. but uh, the way that they chromed it out and finished it off is really cool, but it also has a lot of instruction for you as well too. Gives you a lot of cool tips. Um, well, cool. Well, you're going to paint, and then I'm guessing I'm going to start working on electronics here in the near future and uh, helping it. Uh, what, what motors does this fly off? Um, they had 2212s in there. So. Oh, so our B motors. So. Cool. If you guys don't know, we have a B motor for our Tubby B17. It looks like all the electronics and all the components will cross directly over, with the exception you may need a couple extra servos for like the Fowler flaps, the rudder, and things like that. But it's a really good way to save a lot of money, get four motors, the Y harnesses, everything you need very quickly. So, Michael, what are you doing? They have it where you can make the top turret on this thing look around. So they also have an FPV mount, which I thought was pretty cool if you wanted to strap a camera up there, but we're just gonna do the turret for now. They have a little like puck. So this little puck, you mount your servo on, and then in the top, in the bottom of this dude, there is a place to put your control horn into. You can kind of see it sticking through down here. And you glue your control horn down into that, and you just sort of screw right through the top, just like you can mount a normal control horn onto a servo. So super simple way to do it. Man works quite well so I do some modifications because our servos are a little not the right size for the hole but it worked out and it looks awesome so. all right so Michael did a great job building this here we went ahead and we bound this to an ELRS because we want to fly this we also want to be able to put FPV on this in the future which is really cool because this actually accounts for that doesn't it with mm -hmm. the little top turret it does so we're going to program this on the ELRS so we can fly it long distance without worrying about it now I'm using our FT pocket transmitter this is really cool because it has all these different preloaded profiles to it, along with a lot of other cool features. Now, a lot of people think for something takes eight channels, so you need something really advanced. This is sub $100, and we are putting everything on this. The only thing we wired together was our top turret, so when we move our rudder, it moves the turret. All right, so Michael did a fantastic job in building this. This is definitely one of the biggest 3D printed airplanes, and for sure, the one with the most motors at one time. Now, a couple of really cool features about this here. So many different components are held on with magnets, which means you not only get the benefit of basically being able to pop this apart, but also you can add scale details or even replace those scale details in case it gets a little bit of hanger rash. Now, you know our history with retractable gears, especially with our runways here, always roll off the edge. But if you like retracts and that added scale detail, retracts are available and you can put those on very easily. They even have the files for it. Michael's finished in charging up the batteries on our ISDT chargers, and then we're gonna head out to Ready Board Runway and put it up for a flight. 
All right, so we're out here at Ready Board Runway, and although this is not made out of foam board, the cool thing is it is totally DIY, which is what Ready Board Runway is all about. Yeah, this is a great looking airplane. I can't wait to see this thing in the yeah. air. I love the fact that we actually have a steerable tailwheel. So what do you say, do we just put it in the air? Yeah, I say you just go for it. Okay, you all ready? Michael's gonna be chasing us. He did all the work building, now he gets to chase it. <laughs> you ready, Noah? Here we go. Oh, wow. Well. I was really light trying to steer. I was like, you know what, I'll just get in the air. It took off way quicker than I expected. Now yeah. it is a pretty heavy plane. It is. We were actually kind of talking about that when we were building it and stuff. Uh, Cause we're used to a lot of foam board airplanes and everything. But one cool thing about the B-17, it is huge and it is dialed in. Yeah, I mean, between Eclipsen and then also Bamboo Labs and yeah. Eclipsen doing the profiles for Bamboo Labs, this thing was a breeze to print. I mean, I had it done in two days. Of course, we do have 13 printers. Yeah. But I mean, it was as simple as just pulling up the plate, hitting print, and letting it do its thing. We have no aura in this, by the way. Uh, a lot of times I put the aura in there just because I love just playing with the aura. But I really wanted to see what this flew out with no, or flew like with uh, no stabilization. So what you're seeing right now is no gyros, just the pure airplane flying for you. And it's also a pretty breezy day, and it seems yep. like it's handling it really good. I really like the three bladed seven inch props on it. It gives a lot more of a scale detail. And we're flying on more of a thermally day right now and the wind's kind of blowing. It's really handling it nicely. And it also has split flaps. Yes, I'm oh curious yeah. curious to know what it'll do with those. Oh my golly, I forgot about the flaps. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take it up. I'm gonna put it in the wind and we'll see how she behaves. There's a few mistakes high. <laughs> yeah, that's always a good thing. All right, you ready, Mike? Yep. All right. Here we go. Oh, wow. It oh, just kind of there blew it up is. and stopped. Look at that. All right, now I'm flying on quarter throttle, guys. <laughs> Incredible. Wiggling my ailerons. The ailerons feel good. Yeah, these are Fowler flaps. Flaps going up. I love it. Now, I love touch and go, so that's one of the reasons why we chose to go ahead and go with a fixed gear. I don't mind seeing that gear hanging down. And oftentimes when I run out of battery, I got to put her out in the grass. This just gives me a little bit more durability. All right. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and bring her in for a landing here. Look at that. So nice. Oops. Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Work, it's a winner. And it's still in one piece. Look at that. So if you guys are wondering about your very first B-17, I think this one could be the one for you. Yeah, and I mean, if worst case comes to it, you mess up, you just 3D print a new piece and glue it back together. Exactly, there's a lot of benefits to 3D printing and stuff, the scale detail, the speed of repair, and also the imagination can really take hold. Right, yeah. so um, if you guys like this, make sure you go check it out. It's available on Clipson's yep. website. And also while you're at it, check out the Bamboo Labs. Uh, they're an awesome printer and they do a great job. Yeah, they really made this possible with the speed and the quality and stuff. And if you guys wanna save big, you can save 5% on any file from Clipson just simply by using the code flight. All right, so we'll see you guys next time. Take see care. You next time.